Hi, I'm Mark Rivera from the Billy Joel Band and Ringo Starr's All Star Band. And I'm here at Alto Music and I want to thank John Haber, my dear friend. And this is my gear story. Well, I'm here talking about gear, but I'd also like to talk about my book, Sidemen, Pursuit of the Next Gig. Uh, and what happened first for me regarding gear is this saxophone right here. It's a buffet crammed on alto saxophone. It's got to be 63 years old. And this is the horn that uh, allegedly fell off the back of a truck. My Uncle Vinny got me this horn. I think my dad paid 50 bucks for it, uh, which was a lot of money back then. And so was the $3 that he paid for my lessons every week. Uh, and speaking of my Uncle Vinny, when I was in the Burrow Wide Band in Brooklyn, I played this little soprano saxophone. <laughs> I can't make this up. This is one of the tiniest instruments I've ever had. When I was in Burrow Wide Band, we played the William Tell Overture, and I think I had... <laughs> this saxophone was old when I got it in 19... Let me see, I was in Burrow Wide Band. 1967, so it's the Bisher. It was my Uncle Vinny's, and I got to play it. May he rest in peace. He was my godfather. Very important piece of equipment. My alto saxophone, once I had this horn for quite a while, my dad purchased a Selmer, which was a big deal. I got accepted into high school performing arts, so I needed a better horn, and this is what I got. This horn, there's a lot of different stories, but the first one playing, playing in high school, the band Foreigner, the first song we played uh, every show was called Long, Long Way From Home, and this is the solo I played on, on this horn. <laughs> If you know the song, that was a joy that that band, Mick Jones and Lou Graham. Second big story about this saxophone. I had been out with Foreigner for about a year and a half and Billy was uh, replacing. Again, I don't like to use the word replace, but Billy and Richie Kanata thought it was time to part ways. So Billy was looking for a new sax player. Doug Stegmeyer, may he rest in peace. Billy's former musical director came and heard me playing with David Brown, who was a guitar player with Billy's band. And he said, hey, I like your sound. Billy's looking for a new sax player. Can you learn Only the Good Die Young, Still Rock and Roll to Me, and Just the Way You Are? So I went home and I shedded those three songs. Did Only the Good Die Young, played the sax solo, did Still Rock and Roll to Me, played the, sang the both backgrounds and played the sax solo. So we got to Just the Way You Are, and I played this. <laughs> And he stops the band. I'm like, oh crap, did I screw it up that badly? Walks up to me, gives me a kiss on the cheek and says, as long as you want a gig in my band, you've got it. And I have to this day, 40 years later, a seat at the table. I'm so grateful. Thanks, Billy. I'm gonna put this one back. This right here, this is my Mark 6 tenor, uh, serial number M11646. So the horn's gotta be 45 years old at least. I uh, went down to Electric Lady Studios. My dear friend, Mike Lang, called me and said, Marcus, you have to come down to Ladyland. And I just played a gig in tracks in the city. I said, well, when? When, when do you need me? He said, right now. It was already midnight. So I got down to the studio. I got to meet Mick Jones and Lou Graham from Farner, and they were recording this single. And there was two measures at one point and then eight measures at the next point. And it turns out the session lasted about four and a half hours. But the first thing that I played the moment I got there was this. <laughs> And of course, Junior Walker played. And so on. The funny thing was that Mick and Lou going back and forth, having a vodka, playing football, and telling me, let's try this, let's try that. Mud had pressed the record button 
the moment I got there, because the horn was relatively warm, we were still getting the, the headphone mix. I played that, lo and behold, four and a half hours later, he said, come back in, I want you to hear something. Press the play and mix. Mick Jones was like, wow, that's great. It's like Morse code. When was that? And Mutt said, that was the first thing Marcus played when he walked in. So as a recording musician, or in any situation, trust your instincts. The first thing you play is usually the best because you're reacting to the moment and you're present. Once people start saying, well, how about if you play that bit over here and this bit of your thinking? And as a musician, I think it's way overrated. One other very important thing about this Mark VI tenor, once again, I was at that club Trax, famous club, and I, I was at Trax backing a young lady and this guy comes up, it was uh, her boyfriend at the time. He says, hey man, can I get your number? I really dug the band. I said, sure, I gave him, the, gave him my number. Lo and behold, about four years later, I get a phone call. Just come back, uh, just come back to another gig. He said, hey Mark, it's Jimmy Fallon. Uh, I said, hey, what's happening? I'd like you to come down to the power station. And this is while I was out with Foreigner. So it must have been 85, 86. And um, we had two or three days off. I got called to do this and my wife's freaking out. We have a young son at home and I, I would be home for three days and back out for another couple of weeks. But I said, sweetheart, I got to do this session. I almost didn't do it, but he said, we're cutting Peter Gabriel's new record at the power station. So again, my Mark Six tenor. Again, first thing comes to your mind, Peter Gabriel said, I'll just play what comes to your mind. And I swear, this is the first thing that came out of this horn. That's what I play. <laughs> Mark Six Tenor. This Barry Sachs. I love this horn. My... Selma Barry 110146 with the low A to the concert C. I haven't even played this one. <laughs> joined Ringo Starr's All-Star Band. I, at the audition, I became the musical director because as, as Ringo said, just ask Mark, he seems to know everything. Speaking of Ringo, he wrote the forward in my book, Sideman, Pursuit of the Next Gig. What an honor. It was crazy because I played these songs probably 15 years at least before the audition. So I guess I'd been practicing or rehearsing for that gig for like a, over a decade. So this is a, a song that Felix Cavalieri played with the Rascals. All the world over so easy to see People everywhere just want to be free Listen please, listen, that's the way you should be Peace in the valley And I had to get out for this I couldn't quite finish the vocal part because it was peace in the valley, people want to be free but I could only sing peace in the valley <laughs> It's, it could be a lot worse because we had Billy Preston playing piano, which was, uh, it was unbelievable being involved in that band. That was 1995, but it was the greatest joy. That audition led to me becoming Ringo's all-star band, Musical MD, which I, to this day, uh, take great pride in. I've held that position now for five, 28 years. Wow. <laughs> great pride. That's my baritone. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention these Yamaha saxophones that I play currently are my ex American Express cards. I do not leave home without the serial number 004794, I believe is correct. And since the time of my Selmer tenor, I was using a Bobby Dukoff mouthpiece. I have now been using Gary Sugal. Gary's a friend, he made these for me. You'll hear the difference in the sound. <laughs> They scream. I want to thank the people in Yamaha for a lot to say that. Uh, John Whitman, my dear friend Tomoji Hirokata, uh, the repairman, who I don't let anybody touch this horn. So this is my Yamaha, and um, if you notice, I have an unlacquered neck here. Uh, I got the prototype for the unlacquered tenor years ago. I, like, I wish I could remember the exact year. Uh, but John Whitman sent me the prototype, which is I'm using this 
unlike a neck with this obviously silver plated horn it just has a different tone and quality there are times when i like to use the unlacquered body with the silver neck because that gives a whole other balance i find that the all unlacquered horn is very dark so when i put the silver neck on it just gives it a little more bite a little more brightness and when i have the entire silver horn it's too bright so i tone it down with the with the uh, unlacquered neck but i do love my yamahas and Chris Giro, I gotta give him some love as well. So I wanna move on from the brass section onto maybe some strings and percussion. This is my gear story and I'm sticking to it. Peace and love.